Okay, so this is the last video in a series of videos. This will be part four. And in here I'll show you some last interactivity. Okay, in last movie we were shown how to place a video inside of our file. Instead of placing a video actually, you could also just check out uh, the dimensions of a video you know is on a home page an mp4 file on a home page which is h264 encoded um, so I actually know um, a link for an mp4 file uh, so I'm just gonna say uh, gonna go and just check place and see my desktop Digital Publishing, Block 1, Chapter 6, Streaming Video. This video will be the size 640 times 360. Times was it 300? <laughs> 250? Uh, just for a sec. My brain is not working. I've been working all day long. Six hundred and forty times 360 six four three six that's it okay so actually I know that in this frame will be a video I'm just gonna remove this girl away with the I'm just gonna put this on here and I'll make this one black perhaps put a picture in if I, if I wanted to but I won't and then you instead you can actually choose for it to be a folio overlay video and put a, an earl in here i'm just going to put this earl right here inside of it video uh, just make this box a video so i'm going to paste this earl in here and notice what the earl says if you want i'll just make it bigger so you can actually see what it says there you have it just put your screen on pause and write that earl inside of your um, inside of your video overlay gonna delete this earl now because i already pasted it in there and then i'm just gonna say tap to view controller and probably gonna set some different settings here and just gonna preview it see if it works gonna click the play button and there you have it yeah 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 super duper okay so next off I'll just create three more things I'm not going to go through object state slideshows. You can watch your own videos about that. Go to YouTube, go to lynda.com. There's excellent videos about creating object states inside of InDesign. Just remember to check out how to do it with folio overlays because there are some things that are different in folio overlays where you'll need to go inside of the slideshow option in order to configure it correctly. So I'm not going to show you how to make slideshows 
it's not that much different from making it in interactive PDFs. Okay, um, and likewise, I'm not going to show you anything about hyperlinks. You can just check that out yourself in buttons and forms. I also told you you could use some buttons. I'm not going to show you any more of those buttons, but I told you which buttons could be used. So just figure that out yourself or watch some movies about it. And so what is it we'll, go, we'll be checking out? Image sequence is one of them, pan and zoom is another, and panorama is the third. So let's just take the image sequence first. I'll go inside of my folio and I'll select some page to include an image sequence in. So let's just go to the UCN school. And here I you notice that actually in my last video I put it to play fast speed and in that process I uploaded this document which it did not show unless you really check the fast pace movie. Uh, if you have a local folio and you want it uploaded to the cloud you can just click here and choose upload to folio producer. Then it's not local anymore and it will never become local again okay so I'll select um, to put an animation inside of perhaps yeah the classes let's just load that up and see if there's room on one of the pages I think there'll be room here <clears throat> so I'll just uh, place a picture. Let's say it's gonna be this number one. Gonna place it right here. And it can be any size you want. It can be smaller if you want to. I think I'll just put it approximately around here make it this size perhaps here okay so when having done so I'll just go to the folio um, overlays and choose it, it doesn't have to be a picture it could be anything it could be a black frame if you wanted to uh, so I could just delete this put it to be a black frame like that doesn't have to be a picture the only reason I took it in there was to get the aspect ratio right of this image okay so I'm gonna put an image sequence in here which will be an animation and to do this I'll need a sequence of images I'll load the images they're located inside my DPS I just actually I made this from a photo I took of a friend called Cecilia um, and in here in the image sequence folder we have the Photoshop version of her eye going from one color to another I just changed her eye inside of Photoshop with hue saturation added five to the hue then saved, added 5 to the hue, then saved, added 5 to the hue, then saved, added 5 to the hue, then saved, and so on. And then later on I added some saturation and then desaturated and then I made it lighter and so on. Everything made in the hue saturation menu uh, dialog box. Uh, and out of this came 110 pictures. And so like I said, just click on the load images inside of image sequence, load images. And in here, um, you just find the correct folder, which has the sequence. Just click open on that folder. You cannot click on these pictures. Instead, on the folder with the pictures inside of them. They need to be ordered 01, 02, 03, 05, 05, uh, 06, 07, and so on. And if you need them to come in the opposite, in the opposite um, um, fashion, you can just um, say play in reverse. I'm just gonna 
change this to be smaller and let's just say check what happens if I say auto play and click preview So, okay, the animation played and it took quite, it was quite fast playing this animation. <clears throat> so, okay, you can click to show first image in initially if you want to. You can also click not to. Just make sure when you're done putting all these settings, just rescale it if you want it to be smaller. Um, so, I'll just click uh, for it tab to play and pause I'll set the sp speed to be 10 frames per second I'll know then that this animation will last 11 seconds because it's 110 pictures so if there's 10 pictures per second then it's gonna be 100 uh, then it's gonna be 11 seconds I can tell it to loop when it reaches the end I can tell it to uh, be a swipeable animation so I can actually click and drag for it to go reverse I can stop at the first and last image if I wanted to uh, when swiping just notice that when you click it then it will loop when going to the end and naturally like I said before you can say it's supposed to play in reverse if you numbered it wrong so picture number 110 if I needed that to be number one well I just play it in reverse I'll just make this smaller again and just click preview I'll cl click for it to play and since I said I could tap it to uh, change the animation, I can click and drag, see, and you can just affect the animation like you want to by clicking and dragging. And so this is how you make an animation using the image sequence. I'm going to show first picture initially, show first image initially, then going to click preview again, preview on desktop. And now when I click this picture, it will hide the area where it says classes because interactive stuff when activated will always hide uh, objects that are not interactive so text the text right, which was right here will be hidden immediately when I click it if it's a video if it's some kind of interactive element like um, animation Okay, so this works, and it's going to work on any platform. Next off, I'll create a, a pan and zoom picture. So I'm actually just going to scroll down here um, to where this guy right here is. Because I know this picture is actually somewhat bigger. What? Don't scroll so fast. I know this picture is actually somewhat bigger. So I'm going to make this a pan and zoom. Uh, going to select them. In here I'll select pan and zoom. I'll just click it to be on. And if I click preview now. On desktop. You'll be able to pan and zoom.
notice when you do like this if you click once on him not just click and drag but click once on him click and then click and drag you're actually able to go inside the picture and try looking at what's up there what's down there and so on so that's the pan zoom function that's actually quite nice especially you could have a lot of stuff hidden I'm just gonna close this one up and say and check out what could be in this picture right here gonna say pan zoom on preview on desktop notice if I do this if I make this an interactive object though check what happens so when I click her and start moving her the text will disappear so like I said before interactive items will hide non-interactive stuff so the text box located right here disappeared okay next up I'll create a panorama and to do that I'll go to my folio builder and I'll just save this so I can close it Actually, I'm saving on top of my nice files, making them ugly. Oh, damn. <laughs> so, I uh, ho hopefully I, I'll not save this one, and hopefully I have the old version there. Uh, here I'll make a panorama. So I'll go to Folio Overlays and click on Panorama, Folio Overlay, Panorama on this picture. I'll load some images and those images that I will load is actually in here panorama it's some pictures I I borrowed from lynda.com uh, it's six different pictures and we'll just take a look at those so I'm just gonna open my bridge and go to DPS overlays panorama and see okay so we shot a picture from this side then a picture from this side then a picture from this side and then finally a picture from this side the fifth and the sixth sixth picture is up in the sky and down into the ground So you're shooting like a cube. Imagine that you're inside of a cube. You know, just like a cube that looks like this. Boom, 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 boom. This is a cube. Cube. I'm talking about this type of whoops. This type of cube. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do this. Hello. Okay, like that. This type of cube. <laughs> this type of cube. that's a cube okay so you're shooting this side this side right here which is the front you're shooting this side in here the side right here the side down here and the one on top and the one at the bottom okay so you're shooting like a cube taking pictures in six different directions which will make out this cube and I uh, lynda.com already did that for me so I'm just gonna choose to open this panorama 
inside of my folio overlay panorama I'm gonna use not the first image for a poster that's gonna be this picture and the initial zoom is how far you're zoomed into the panorama when you start it and the vertical and horizontal is which direction you're pointing in when you start the panorama uh, the field of view is um, how much you're able to see at once of your panorama and the limit vertical pan is how far you're supposed to be able to look up or down and limit horizontal pan is how far you're supposed to look to the left or look to the right since I want to be able to turn myself entirely uh, 360 degrees and just continue doing so like this blah 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 I'll choose not to limit the horizontal pan I would like there to be a limit to how much I can look up into the air so I'll set that to 45 degrees and down to 45 degrees actually I know I'll still be able to see this Adobe commercial when setting it to 45 but let's just try it I'll click preview on desktop And see it says click image for pan panorama I'll just try clicking it boom and it will open up this panorama and I can click and drag to just watch how it looks at UCN which is not UCN but Rue Academy in fact I'll just look up into the air and I'll look down oh there's a commercial from Adobe I'll just not want to see that so I'll just click this off and say I only want to see 20 degrees down and I'll click preview again and then then indeed when clicking this I'll try scrolling down again and now I cannot see this commercial lucky me Panoramas are only viewable on iPhones and iPads so if this were on an Android device or a Windows phone or whatever type of device which is not iPad or iPhone you cannot view the panorama. So when you're done creating this digital publishing uh, folio you'll just first off you'll of course update all of it you'll make sure to have everything updated so just update everything Okay, finished. What you'll do when you want to publish this is you'll want to go to Folio Producer. Of course, you could share it with your friends first. Just say share. Share this with your friends. Uh, they need to have an Adobe idea, like I said earlier. To actually publish your document, your folio you could either create an app or use the folio producer so I'll just use this folio producer I have to sign in with my Adobe ID um, and I'll just go back here I can click on the folio producer to enter the producer and do some changes to my publication and when ready I'll click publish and then you can actually make it a live pu publication um, yeah, but you have to research that on your own. I think that's it from me. Have a nice and splendid day or evening. Thank you.